I'm coming to the table with evidence, everybody. We love a receipt. It's a receipt. Oh, it's a fucking receipt. So I needed I needed a little extra time today for this recording because I remembered when someone had told me I needed to listen to two teas in a pod when it was like 2021. I remember someone someone was like, you'll like it, I swear. So I went through a very short phase of listening to it semi regularly, semi, mm-hmm. but like I blocked it out because it was so <laughs> it was just it wasn't a good it was awful. So I only vaguely remembered this and I went on a deep dive search back in time through the two T's journey. Remember they were covering Orange County, Teddy and Tamara, like the season it was Noella and whatnot. They were covering it. So I didn't listen to all the episodes because I don't have that. I mean, I I love us, but not, not, not that much. Like that's too much. Yeah. But I found just to show like the foundation of where Heather was coming from, there's on 12 14 2021 the episode is titled sushi gate and it is how do you spend thirty six thousand dollars on sushi heather and who is paying for that that's the description so like there was shade then on uh april 14th 2022 the episode description is why isn't heather following her fellow housewives what's up with that okay and then on 4 22 OC wasn't a train wreck. It was, it wasn't a hot mess. There was no drama. It was dull. The two T's don't sugarcoat. So they were, you know, pretty savagely reviewing Orange County, right? So then this is from May 12th, 2022. This is a long clip. I think that Tamara came in. This is how deep her resentment went towards Heather. Because I remembered this clip. So I thought it was kind of weird that they opened this season like friends like they went like picket yeah ball. they did like something right no yeah they were absolutely on like great they terms. were a good yeah yeah so here is the clip just b- brace yourselves guys it's seven minutes and 30 seconds okay we have to talk about the heather podcast yeah i was struggling with this i actually been in like a funk like i noticed no i could literally cry about it no no because it's it was so mean girl like not necessary and I, I did talk to her afterwards. Like I sent her a message that was not very nice and she ended up calling me and we talked through it. But I mean, it, it was, it was just, I listened to it like maybe five times after it. And I'm like, this is just mean. This is mean. Exact, so for people that don't know what exactly. Yeah. Do okay. So she has this co-host on there, Jefferson and another girl that I don't know who they are. Um, and her, her co-host says, it's weird when ex-cast members who are watching your show and their life is still being defined by the fact that they used to be on your show, referring to me. And he went on to say that Tamara went on from being your friend to being a blogger. And they multiple times they would call me a blogger and say that um, I needed to get a life. And unlike Heather, when she wasn't on the show, she didn't watch the show. Um, and like, as if me watching the show was a bad thing. And then Heather went on to say, how do you come back from that? And why would you even, um, you know, why would you come after me? There's no place for Tamara on the show now that she's a blogger. And it just, it was like, they tried to constantly put a message out there about me. And they when tried, I they tried to belittle you. Yeah. Like they were belittling me that I'm a blogger, which she knows well, damn even, well. Okay. Let's just say, even if you were a blogger, which were podcasters, which is very different than a blogger, but even so, then she went on to continue to say like, listen, she's doing her best to stay relevant and do this. And all of these things, like I have to point out, you never said anything negative about Heather. I, and- that's, I know. And that's why I'm so confused on what she's doing. And I'm not going to give details about what our conversation was, but I, I asked her, I said, what did I say? And she said, well, you know, people send me things. I said, you know what? When I heard about this podcast is because people were sending me things and the things they sent me were so horrible that I thought, no way. So I listened to it and it obviously wasn't as bad as how people were telling me it was. So, you know, I, I did my homework. I listened to it. It was still bad, but it wasn't as bad as what people were saying. But also if there's someone she wants to be irritated with, she could be irritated with me. You always had her back. And to be perfectly honest, and I hope that you do hear this, Heather, anything that I said about you, I said, I've also seen in myself. 
So a hard thing that I have with watching you from episode to episode is sometimes I feel like you are self-produced. That is something that a type A human being like myself right. also does. I think that it did not play well sometimes for me. I also believe it doesn't play well sometimes for Heather. I think that the fans also agree. Am I ever calling her a bad person or going no. after her business or going after anything like that? Absolutely not. And you've actually had her back even more so, which what I said in the first place wasn't that bad anyway. And I say the same thing about right. And the thing that's so confusing to me is this guy like just really went off of me saying I had no life, that I needed to move on, that I couldn't get over things and that I sit around. And all I do is watch the show. I'm like, listen, Jefferson, you don't know me. Um, you don't. I even looked him up. He doesn't follow any housewives. He doesn't even follow Heather. Like, so I went on the podcast. I looked at the reviews to see what people were saying about me. There was only one review underneath this um, podcast. And it says, I listened to their podcast, meaning our podcast, Two Teas in a Pod. She's easy on you. It's Teddy. And she's gotten annoyed with Teddy on how she said things. It's her podcast. They do all the housewife shows. I think she definitely has said many uh, nice things about you. And so I'm like, what did I do? And the fact that she said I didn't return her phone call, she or text, she texts me at 1217 in the middle of the night. I was asleep. The next morning I get up, I go work out. In fact, me and you FaceTimed her. I know we FaceTimed her. We tried yeah. to watch the whole thing. And honestly, I didn't even, well, the thing is, is like, I didn't even know she was mad at that point. Like I, I had no idea she was mad. She just sent me this text. Why would you do that? And I'm like, first of all, I didn't do it, but whatever. And then um, it's like, this is just weird. And then she can, then she keeps saying in interviews and stuff, well, I asked Tamara to come back. Well, no, she didn't. She invited you to one. She invited me to a party. I got the call from Alex. She invited me to a party. And I didn't go. And she knows why I didn't go. So if you're going to go on your show and say that I want to be relevant, well, then I got asked multiple times to, to film. Why didn't I film? Like, yeah, but I'm doing this podcast because you and iHeart reached out to me. It made sense. You know? We enjoy, like we have fun <laughs> together. We don't have to justify it, and it's working. I know and it's just, it's just hurtful. It was a very I, the part that I don't like, and what I've said that I haven't liked is why the same reason she doesn't follow anybody that's on her current cast. Why is it that she feels so threatened by you? She needs to put you down. I think it's almost to, because she's worried you will come back, and then all of a sudden she's not going to be able to call the shots anymore. Yeah. You know what? I was seriously asking myself, like going over at my head for like the past few days. And I'm like, why did she do this? Like she was putting a message out there, clear message. And I think it was to Bravo. And I think you're right. I think she wanted to make me look bad. She wanted to um, insinuate that I was some like dirty blogger and uh, there's no place for me on the show, which was so hypocritical because in her own bio on the podcast, she says, I cover all things housewife. But because we cover housewives, we're bloggers. Like, and you know what? Hats off to bloggers. Hats off to yeah. however you make but, your living. But the way she was life. saying it to me was as if she was, you know, putting, the way she was having the people that are. Yeah. Also. So oh. my feelings are hurt. We did talk it out. We agreed to move on. But, you know, I've gotten so many messages about this and I just wanted to clarify, like, I'm not going after her. This is also what I want to say, just in closing, then we'll take a little break and come back and recap the episodes. If somebody's your true friend, they make an effort to see you. They don't just make an effort to reach out to you when it's convenient to them. Right. They want you to promote something on their behalf. Right. And that, I'm sorry. I know. She doesn't even follow her best friend on the show, Gina. I mean, come on. I don't know her reasoning. If you're, that. if you are going to, you know, continue saying that, t that Tamara did something inappropriate. Yeah. To you, really? I mean, I don't, I don't want to bash her. I mean, and I'm not bashing her. I'm doing the obvious. No, I know that is the obvious. And the thing is, is like with our podcast, we have a very well known producer <laughs> that produces this show. They have a very good relationship with Bravo, we go through all the channels that we should go through to get our guests. Like, you know, we, I, I called the, the PR girl for Orange County to ask if one of the girls can come on. And she said, not at this time. I said, thank you very much. Like, we're not like sneaky and we're not dirty in any way. And it's just, it's just upsetting to be so put down when it wasn't warranted. When I have multiple times um, in the press to Andy, do you like, bring Heather back, bring Heather back. Has she ever said that about me? No. Okay, let's just move on. It is We're going to move on, take a little break and
Okay. So much. I so hate, much. I hate Teddy. <laughs> God, I hate I can't so hear much. you. Oh, sorry. I said, I hate Teddy. But here's the thing I got to say. I'll say it. I think that Heather was probably being shady and shitty. And she deserved for Tamara maybe to confront her about it. And they talked about they moved on. There's no way she was clearly moved on from that. Yeah, th- that that's so interesting because I need to know, and I, maybe they'll address it in the reunion, like what, how they were able to get back seemingly so tight in the beginning of filming after. That's a long, long rant. And that's like not, Tamara, like that's not like, because I can tell when Tamara's like, producing an argument and when Mm -hmm. it's like yes exactly right well that's why i thought there was going to be good tension between heather and tamra when tamra came back i was like "Ooh, okay cool because i'd enjoy seeing that but instead they talked it out and agreed to move on quote unquote but tamra i think short okay so this was in may i can't remember when BravoCon was uh that year or if there even was one i don't remember but uh not too long after that Tamara goes to BravoCon and Heather is there with the that cast with Noella. Mm-hmm. So she was going to look for anything she could possibly find. They're already pointing out that she doesn't follow uh, her cast members, her good friend Gina. So they were like, Tamara was just searching for an ounce of something from Heather to yeah. prove that she was bad. Yeah. And then she held on to it. I mean, it it doesn't even sound like something Heather would say, but they're all a bunch of losers. Like, that's not even really, she would use a bigger word than that. (laughs) Yeah, I, I agree. Her, her repertoire of language is large. And I I just don't think I would hear her say losers. Like that sounds, that sounds like something Tamara would say. Exactly. That sounds like something Tamara said repeatedly and then convinced herself that that's what was said by Heather. You know what I mean? And I also, because I have seen Heather be like this whenever Tamara is talking about the other castmates, she just doesn't say anything. And I feel like sometimes Tamara takes that as she agrees with me because she's not defending them. So yeah, she's, she's like, we she thought she that we, yeah, you know what I mean? Because every time that. they, yeah, every time they run a clip back, Heather is not like jumping in to be like, hey, don't talk about Gina. Don't talk about Emily. She just sits there uh, and she listens and that's it. And I think that's probably Heather's. If if they're going to get mad at Heather, it's for, I would say, if I was them, it would be like, why don't you speak up for me in the moment? That would be a valid argument that they could have. But I don't think that. Well, that's I, Gina's argument. Is Is that what she's saying? Oh, well, I thought she was more so saying than why don't you come and tell me? I thought that's what that was her her gripe. Like, why don't you tell me right away instead of like holding it in to use it when you guys, you and Tamar are in, are in a in a tiff. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I thought that Gina's argument was ridiculous, but now when you just explained that, I was like, oh wait, maybe Gina does have a point. I think Gina does have a. The thing is, I do think that Gina has a point, but. I also feel like her point doesn't come across all the time because it's muddied with a lot of other issues that she's having with Heather. So it's like, I don't, it's like, I have to, like, I, I'm actually just figuring that out talking to you. Cause when it's, when I'm watching it on the screen, it doesn't yeah, make Yeah, it made sense. no sense to me, right? It was like, what yeah. are you even saying, Gina? Yeah. But now when you said that, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know I didn't know that until we just talked either. Like I didn't oh. like yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a little different. It's a little different, but it's still like I still feel mostly how I feel about the situation. <laughs> Does that make sense? Whatever. I don't don't take that away from us. <laughs> <laughs> I I okay, that's different. <laughs> that's so different. Um, that really, ch- that's like, I need to reevaluate how I've looked at this scene because the, the, I even made like a, a specific reel about how annoying that scene is where they go to the lunch and Gina's like, okay, like if you're my friend, Heather, then maybe you wouldn't have, maybe you would have stood up for me or something. And I was just like, Gina, shut up. Like, yeah, just admit that you for some reason are believing Tamara when you've literally been telling Heather not to believe Tamara, but now I guess you need a storyline. I don't know what's happening here. That 
you see now you're making me go, okay, backward now. Okay, so now you just telling me that made me realize why Gina pissed me off in that scene. <laughs> like, because her, she is making a point, but then she un, undoes the point by like, not addressing the fact that she's ultimately upset that she came into the season trying to warn Heather about Tamara and then Heather was not reacting in the way in which Gina wanted her to. And it start it was really at that damn camping shit. Ooh. Yep. And and she has Gina has not moved past that. And so all, Ooh. Yes. So Ooh, you're right. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's her point is is not pointing. <laughs> the it's not pointing yeah that is okay so we cracked the code yes we cracked the fucking code to quote the ancient african proverb i said what i said so rocket money sponsored the pod i used rocket money but i kind of used it like okay blah 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 something about subscriptions not knowing what i have but i'm like i know what i have well, I didn't. There's so many streaming services. I had a ton of double ups, like some streaming services had multiple things within them, but I was still paying for them individually. So Rocket Money was able to cancel a few. Apparently I needed it. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending. It helps you lower your bills all in one place. Most people think they're spending around like 80 bucks on subscriptions when in reality it's more like 200 it adds up so fast when you're signed up for so many things it's easy to totally lose track as i've learned with rocket money you can easily cancel the ones that you don't want and just press a button no more long hold times or annoying emails with customer service rocket money is like your concierge rocket money can even negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to like 20 percent all you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money will take care of the rest. Okay, that's incredible. What I also love is Rocket Money lets you monitor all of your expenses in one place and they recommend custom budgets based on your past spending. They'll even send you notifications when you've reached your spending limit. I don't like those emails, but I need them. With over 3 million users and counting, Rocket Money customers have saved an average of $720 a year. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash she speaks. That's rocketmoney.com slash she speaks. Rocketmoney.com slash she speaks. Not well, bitch. So in that clip that I that we just listened to, like you said, Pia, I hear a genuine situation. Mm -hmm. happening not one that has been manufactured so then like let's now go through what's happened for Tamara. she has this fake makeup with heather but let's put she she makes up with her but she doesn't forget and she's holding on to all this stuff and i i will say also at the lunch at the lunch not like heather would have known what this meant but uh she only played the part of the clip or at least that's what they showed us um the part of the clip up until or right before tamra says it's actually an inside joke between shannon and i so whether they cut that off intentionally for us or she played the whole clip for gina and they just didn't show it to us mm -hmm. when you hear it as it's in, in its entirety like her saying it's actually an inside joke it's actually whatever if Heather didn't say these are a bunch of losers, then how is she going to know, oh, that's about me? Do you Wait, know what I mean? Say that part again. Sorry, sorry. I know that was convoluted. Okay. So they play the clip for, we, we presented the clip almost seemingly like Heather is kind of leaving off the part where Tamara says, this is an inside joke. Yeah. Right? Yes. So I don't know if she played it for Gina or not, but regardless, I don't think Heather was being like sneaky by mm -hmm. not showing that part of the clip or not listening to that part of the clip. Because if she didn't say these are a bunch of losers, she wouldn't know there's an inside joke about her because she's like, well, I didn't say that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Did I do it? Kind no? of. I'm s no, you did. I'm like, I think I keep getting lost at the like last little bit. So are you saying, he so are you trying to say Heather was not being sneaky and it was sorry i don't think i caught the end just the okay. end part just the end part i don't remember what the end part was now <laughs> like so what are you what's, what are you ultimately saying that that heather's intention was when she played that tape to um gina 
Like, do you think like that's was ju- was to just show her Tamara called us losers. Right. And I think it proved that not. Though. Well, no, because the way they in my opinion, the way they presented the clip to us was just that chunk. And then later at the very end, when Heather and Tamara are going at it, mm-hmm. they play the full clip where she says it's an inside joke. Yeah, but she says between, but Tam, but she she never mentions Heather's name. If 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 it was an inside exactly. joke, exactly. That's yeah. what I'm. Oh, that, okay. That okay. That's where I. Okay, sorry. That's where I was getting my brain got really like confused. But yes, no. Yeah, you, that's you, what I'm saying. Is that it's not. It, I don't know if the editors intended to make Heather try to look like she was being shady. I don't think she was like she wouldn't have oh, known. Yeah. Yeah. That was. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now we got there. Yeah, I did it. I'm so sorry. I like because they because they do. No, kind of I probably like, was explaining it weird. I f- I like didn't sleep last night, so I'm a little fucked up. No, no, no. I think you were explaining it right, but sometimes like I think with the way that they do the funny editing, like I do have to like piecemeal it back together like but you did it for me so sorry (laughs) yeah they were trying to tell us like see heather only showed that clip then i'm like even if she'd heard the whole thing who they don't know what inside joke mean they don't know what they're they don't know what you're talking about right so okay we got there all right let's go get there uh shannon goes to that dr tim guy and emily joins that bruise on shannon um okay so i normally what the hell wh- so i know we give shannon a hard time because she's like oh, like she's always getting injured and stuff like she that is, and some- though <laughs> and it's like sometimes i'm like is it like you always there's always something wrong with you you know what i mean so i'm like You're sometimes I, so i i don't always <laughs> think it's important so when she said at the dinner the previous episode like i hurt my you know arm and what there was a tiny bruise i was like okay shannon whatever you hurt your arm but when she showed it on this episode i said honey you need to go to the er that 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 looks something inside of your arm is fucked like <laughs> dr moon is not doing anything he should be doing her body should not bruise like that that's wild like from and the thing is when they play the clip back of how it happened i don't understand i i I saw what happened i saw it okay so there was so she was holding on she was holding on to the whatever the string was right right you know there's something that's like that that's sticking out of and into does that make sense yeah so she was using that and but then i think she knocked right down on it when she came down yeah a, and that looked like a deep deep and in that area Whoa. that's like such a oh uh, so that's shannon i was so jealous though when they did that like adjustment montage mm-hmm I oh wanna, yeah! I'm like, okay. I want to. This was good for his business because I'm like, I will book an appointment. I will drive I, all the way down there. Give it to me. I was like, I was wondering. I was like, did they um turn up the volume on those cracks because those cracks sounded so amazing? They should probably did. They probably totally turned the because I'm up. like that. I was like, crack me. It was so effective because I legit need it because especially since he was like yeah. bending them in weird directions to do it I'm like yeah I need that I need someone to like yeah. put me in a strange position but like that's what I need yeah. to get in and then you adjust me yeah my back needs it so bad yeah and see I have never found a chiropractor that really truly does like individualized adjusting usually when I go to a chiropractor they do the exact same thing every single time mm. I don't want that yeah. I've, I mean, I'll go on YouTube and watch like cracking videos all the time because I'm oh, like, yeah. And I like Dr. Tubio. I need to go see him in, in Texas. I've okay. even tried um, acupuncture, but it didn't really do anything. Yeah, I've I've been to acupuncture before. Uh, what did I need it for? Migraines? Maybe. Because that's so knows- long ago now. Yeah, I got a group on, but that might have been why. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you don't want like a group on for chiropractic. <laughs> Get what you that pay may for. not be the thing. <laughs> They're like, I'm only going to give it you a little bit because you only gave me a little bit of money. Yeah. So- <laughs> They're like, you don't, you're not going to come back. <laughs> I'm telling why I'm not. <laughs> you're not going to come back. So we don't fucking care. Uh, okay. Gina, Tamara, and Jen go to do their Halloween shopping for Gina's party. But meanwhile, Heather and Tara at their rental, their fabulous rental. I wish I was that rich. I, me too. Me fucking too. Uh, but she keeps saying the term, I got dog fucked. And I'm like, I, is this a term? Um, I I think it is. I think I've, the thing is, I, I don't know if she just gaslighted me into thinking I've heard it before, but I was convinced I heard it before. 
I was like, I don't think I've ever heard it before. But then they did the collage of them all coming at her and then like they were zooming in and on that dog, on a dog a pumping the thing and i was like so is this a thing this is a thing okay i think it's a thing and also um bravo editors are top tier like right. the way that they put that montage together i was like art it was art and it is exactly what the fuck happened like would you want to be on that fucking trip that was nope. the best actual term to describe what she went through. That like they were relentless. Yep, R- relentless. Even if she deserved it, which I'm not saying she did in entirety, it was just too fucking much. It was especially it was- ending with the Taylor and Jen being mad that Heather didn't come back with the soup. I'm like, bitches, what time was it? I know. Why wouldn't you go up to her room and be like, "Are you? Co- oh, she fell asleep." You know. Right. That's what I would I would have immediately assumed they fell asleep. I feel like they again just it's it's interesting because I think everybody on the cast, with the exception of maybe Tamara and Shannon, they all really want to be friends with Heather and they get they feel so personally attacked if they think that she's ignoring them and it's their own like projection of insecurity it's projection keep, for sure yeah because they're like you think that you're better than us because you have more money than us you don't you've been ignoring me for three months like I've also never heard you well, maybe they edited it out but I've never heard Jen have an issue with with Heather ignoring her, like agreed, yeah, they but a, a lot clearly was edited out because right. I thought the same thing, and I'm like, oh, that must have come up, like, I, later and or and maybe it did, but I also feel like, in a way, it's easier to for them to be mad at Heather because Heather, even though she is, I think, an articulate arguer, and so I don't know oh why they, think they, I mean, they think they can come at Heather. I think that they're more terrified of Tamara, and Tamara has done the most, I feel like, to everybody this, se- this, this season. Like, Jen, you're really going to pick a fight with Heather after Tamara has come for your fucking neck? All oh, God. She said that you ruined your fucking family, and you're mad that she didn't come back after saying she was going to eat some soup? <laughs> Fuck off. I literally was like, be fucking for real, Jen. No, but honestly. Be fucking for real. Heather, Heather, I'm convinced that she's like, I've only ever thought of Emily and Gina as friends. So I wouldn't have called them losers. I was clearly referring to Noella. Yeah. But then Gina's confessional, Tamara doesn't lie. Bitch, did you do what? And that's why, and that's why her point don't be pointing because she is, (laughs) she's rewriting history to fit her current narrative. And I don't appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I need her to take that back. You need to take that the fuck back. Take it the I can, fuck back right I now. I can't even take you seriously about what your issues with Heather right now. And actually, I do think you have legitimate issues that you could have pointed out, but you're choosing to 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 lie to my motherfucking face about Tamara to legitimize your now fake the way concern about the Heather way talk calling you a loser. Gina fucking freaked out at that lunch. She was like, "You were calling us losers." I hate her face in that. I yeah. hate it. I'm like, what? How? I just don't appreciate them. And when I say them, I'm referring to Gina and Emily taking what Tamara said and turning it into fact exactly. when they weren't there. And immediately, though, like immediately, immediately. absorb taking it in, feeling the hurt as if it was real. Yeah. I'm not saying you can't be hurt because if I felt like a friend called me a name behind my back, I would be hurt. But I would, if that is my friend, and also you guys have both said Tamara has not been your friend. You guys are getting, you know, okay this season. I wouldn't just believe, Tam- I would have given my friend the opportunity to defend herself and actually be open to it. Exactly. But, they, but at this point, both Gina and Emily are clearly irritated with Heather. So they are latching onto anything else that is negative about Heather. It's like the easiest thing for them to do. And and again, I can't. And then all the other stuff that Heather may have done to you, I can't even legitimize because you're lying. <laughs> you're just fucking lying and choosing what? to. What are they annoyed though? Because hasn't Emily confronted Heather a few times and Heather been like, I'm going to work on that? Yes. Uh, and then Emily's is- apologized for like her behavior. And like, isn't that what happened? Emily, you know why other Emily is acting like this. Oh. 
because she, and we've seen this in past seasons, she is best friends with Gina and she gets very territorial over Gina. And I honestly think she was pretending to be okay with how close Gina and Emily, I mean, Gina and Heather got last season. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is her per projecting her jealousy about the the uh Gina and Heather's relationship and actually I think she's low key kind of happy that Gina is is uh mad at Heather or irritated with Heather this season. I think she keeps feeding into it. That's why even when later in the episode when um Gina changes her tune about the loser thing, Emily you, you see how Emily reacts to it. She was she really wants to latch on to the loser thing and like have uh Gina still be mad about it even though Gina said I don't actually think Heather said that. So I don't know if I agree with you for once. Uh, oh, that's okay. I love, I, lo I love when we, I <laughs> we love rarely do, but I just don't get that read from okay. Emily. Okay. At all. So why do you think Emily is so upset with Heather then? Well, I'm, it, that's what I'm confused about, but I don't think it has anything to do with Gina. I think it has more to do with her relationship with Heather. Okay. I don't know if it's like she's mad at Gina and her being friends. I think if anything, maybe she's more jealous that Heather isn't as close with her as Gina. Like she also wants to be as close to Heather. And I think that's also kind of what I'm saying too. I think that, I think that I feel like Emily doesn't, uh, she, it's like a little a part of her insecurity is that she sometimes feels uh, left out, left like a loser. Left, we left, just realized it's a huge trigger yeah. for her. And um, I, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I think that that's kind of where it's it's stemming from, and I don't. Again, mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's all of them, like listening to Tamara and saying that Heather thinks that she's better than them. I don't know why where this is coming from because I actually don't get that read from Heather. Thinking, so wait, you watched last season? I did. What was there like huge beef between Emily, Gina, and Heather? I thought they were like accused of kissing her ass. No? They were they they were heavily, but that's what my point of like last season. I I was. I could Gina Gina and Heather were like inseparable yeah. and Gina was really far up Heather's ass in my yeah. opinion to like a, a nauseating way yeah and I could tell Emily knew that she couldn't like she, Gina was like enamored with Heather and there was like nothing breaking that so she just went along with it but I never felt like it was genuine when I watched it, I felt like she just did it because she didn't, she wanted to appease Gina. Okay. And last time, like, I don't know if it was the season before last, when she, when Gina, who, I don't know who she was getting close to, but like they had some spat in the bathroom, Gina and Emily, because Emily was like, you don't, you don't want to be my friend anymore. Like that, that's where, that's why I think that low key, hmm. em Emily has always had a slight bit resentment of Heather Ooh. and the moment that Gina started to like be irritated with Heather she kind of latched onto that because she wanted to like create create and I don't know if she and I don't think she's by the way I don't think she's doing any of this intentionally consciously co yeah con consciously I just think it's an insecurity she has within her friendships and she, Gina means the world to Emily and I, I think that's where some of it is. And that's and I felt that way specifically in this episode at the end when Gina changed her mind about her like Heather. And I just and Emily was really trying that she was not she was not having it at first until she she had her individual conversation with Heather. And then she was huh. like, okay, you know what I mean? And again, I think it's to your point, she needs to feel like included. And when Heather gave her that validation, she was like, okay, then we can all be friends again. Okay, okay, okay. That sorry, that was like a really long Well, we're both to, doing it today. We're both like doing the longest versions of explaining, but I think I'm on I think I I think I'm following and, and I think you And might you be would right. have to like watch like the pre previous two seasons to understand mm -hmm. what where I'm coming from because if you just watched this season, it what I'm trying to say doesn't completely But I add, forgot. Add you're up. right when they're in when I remember the fight in the bathroom and it's all about Emily being like you don't reach out to me, you don't call me, you don't care about me, so that is a thing for her. So yeah, hmm. yeah. So hmm. that's 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 my only thing. Yeah. Okay, that kind of peppers it in an interesting it, way, and it kind of to me mirrors the same situation that's happening between Tamara and Shannon. Like Shannon, Shannon and Tamara are like the Emily and Gina's, and I feel like mm -hmm. uh, that's why Shannon can't hear anything that Heather is saying because she's just like I I I feel like. Uh, 
Heather is trying to like break up me and Tamara's friendship. And so like anything Heather says, she is just like, no, no, no. Heather is just in the middle of all, all these friendships here. <laughs> like, and so I don't think she just, means to. Yeah. And it's because ironically then Heather, when and Tamara brings it up at the end, Heather says, she's like, remember how Heather's low was us not including her with the, in Montana. And so ironically, Heather's fear was that Tamara and Shannon would get close and she would get and that huh. is that that is what happened though. <laughs> that is literally what happened. It's like her like it's funny because Emily's fear is uh she shouldn't really have that fear because I don't think Heather is that type of person. However, Tamara is and I and Shannon on honestly is the Emily in that relationship that the Emily uh and Tamara is the Gina and she is she's always been up Tamara's ass. So the the moment they made up it was sayonara to Heather. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, let me look through the notes because we may can, we may be able to skip some stuff since we've pretty much covered quite a bit. It's their kind. Of, this is why I actually really enjoy the OC though because I truly don't like have a favorite. So everybody is just on the chopping block for me. Like if I don't like something, like it's just like Heather, I'm gonna like throw you in the bus. Gene, I'm gonna throw you in. I'm like. Every, it's just so f- much more fun that way when you don't I have feel like favorites. We, I feel like we usually do that, no? No, we usually do, but this this particular cast, like I literally don't have a favorite, and it, I find it just much more enjoyable. Yeah. Although Heather became my favorite by default because everyone else was being such an asshole, so she became my favorite towards the end of the season. She definitely became my favorite as well. She's just a standout. I just think that she handled herself the best I felt like I was watching on the MTV challenge and she was just thrown in elimination every fucking week and just coming out victorious and it was yeah. great to watch <laughs> yeah totally okay there is something from when they're shopping Tamara's like let's just say I was talking shit about you guys in New York why didn't Heather sit down with me and say you know you were saying some things you were wasted and I would have been like oh my god I'm so mortified how is it Heather's responsibility even in that hypothetical example to sit you down and check you for things you said that she probably just thought were your thoughts. And why is she going to sit you down and be like, remember what you said? Why would she think that that's not what you think? Because she, Tamara, you know what Tamara was doing? She was, it was so clear to me what she was doing. She knows that she said that shit. And she knows that Heather is going to be like bringing her receipts. And she's already trying to lay the groundwork for these ladies. Like, when um, when Heather does drop her receipts that like, yeah, if I did say it, like she should have still pulled me aside. She's still being a bad friend to you because she never checked me on it. So like, yeah, what? Let's just say I said it like why ask your friend? Didn't she come? And that's also she planted that fucking seed because then what does that Gina do? She plops that motherfucking seed out at the yep. at the at the lunch with fucking Heather. Yep. I, I was like, Tamara, like. I see you, honey. I know exactly what you're doing because you know you're about to be fucking exposed. And that's what Tamara does. That's what she's, that's like her uh, biggest weapon. She will, and they kind of say this, but they still let her get away with this. She'll say what she says and just like blurt it out. Like kind of like, I, I, I'm i going to say it first before they can say it, but then twist it. So for some oh, yeah. reason you don't get mad at her. You know, Cause she's, cause she's uh, owned up to it. She's impressive with the way she can bounce out of things. For real. Very impressive. It's a talent, honestly. That's, That's why it, this all now knowing that listening to that clip, this when she says in her confessional, you want to destroy people. You're not destroying me, bitch. That really tracks because she was like paranoid that Heather was trying to keep her off the show. And so she's on guard. Yeah. Huh. And that's okay. what makes Heather a really good um, opponent for Tamara because I think that it's really oh, evenly amazing. matched. Oh, my. Uh, in, I, if anything, Heather dominates. I, because I, I, Heather yeah. has control, emotional control, verbal skills. Tamara just loses it and becomes like a little wild animal running around. Yeah, I think know? that. Yeah, I think that if Heather wasn't on the show, like Tamara, w- like no one would be able to stop Tamara. No, oh, no. <laughs> Oh, no. that's, that's why I was always saying Heather needs a Tamra and Tamra needs a Heather. Like you can't, you need the, like they're good on the it, same cast. 
Oh, you know, absolutely. Because if I just had Tamara the entire season without a Heather, I, I think I would have just vomited. And actually, that's how I felt last season when Heather was just on the thing because everyone was up her ass. I was like, it just wasn't a good balance. I actually kind of like them both on the show. I, I, I do want Heather to uh, stay, but. A hundred percent. A hundred. I know. We'll see. Because she's like, I don't, I literally don't need it. Like, we're so she rich. Doesn't. I know. Literally, I don't need it. How could you do this to me? Question mark. When I wanted to start a merch store for She Speaks Bravo, we used a company that built everything for us and put all the products in. And the look of the store just was not what I had envisioned. Now, I had used Shopify a couple years ago when I thought I wanted to be a drop shipper. And I was familiar enough with the product that I suggested we just use Shopify. And honey, if you haven't seen my merch store, go check it out. It's really cool. Shopify is your no excuse business partner. You can sell without needing to code or design. Just bring your best ideas and Shopify will help you open up shop. Shopify makes it really easy for you to show up exactly the way you want to. Customize your online store to your style when they have all these gorgeous, really flexible templates and very powerful tools. And this new feature, which I wish had been around when I was selling, if you don't have a way with the words, but you have a way with products, use Shopify's new AI-enabled tools powered by Shopify Magic to instantly write compelling product descriptions and email subject lines that will help you save so much time Time and you'll sell more. Once you start selling, too, Shopify makes getting paid super simple by instantly accepting every type of payment. And Shopify grows with your business. So no matter how far or big you grow, thanks to an endless list of integrations and third-party apps, anything you can think of from on-demand printing to accounting to chatbots, everything you need to revolutionize your business. Do you want marketing made simple? Shopify removes the guesswork with built-in tools that help you create, execute, and analyze your online marketing campaigns. Like, hello, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is a global force, powering Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 170 countries. I've also had the best support on Shopify. They don't make you feel stupid. They walk you through everything. They're really patient. Their support really helps you succeed every step of the way. Sign up for a $1 a month trial period at shopify.com slash she speaks, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash she speaks, all lowercase, to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash she speaks. Okay, so when they go to, when they get to the lunch, um, the way Heather walks in is just epic. First of all, I love Gina ordering the glass of champagne for Heather before Heather even got there. That was yeah, a good move. It was. But the way Heather walked in, it was like she is shut off. She's oh, yeah. not fucking doing this anymore. She walked in with no expectation. She walked in like, I'm going to try to do my best to show her this, but I have no expectations with you anymore, Gina, because you've done nothing but disappoint me. Yeah. And that's like the most scary place for Gina, for Heather to be in. You know, she's like, okay, this is different. Cause she kind of was expecting like Heather to be begging for forgiveness. I know Not she Heather. really did. So that really turned the whole conversation upside down because yep. I, cause when Gina sat down, I really like, I really felt like she had a chip on her shoulder and she was like, I'm going to unleash on Heather and I'm going to make her beg for my friendship. And she just really wasn't expecting to Heather to come in with that energy and it like, I think it really shook her and she like had to change her whole game plan because at the end of the day, I do, Gina really does like Heather and she just really wanted that like reassurance. So then she like, she was like, I can't, I have to like come at this. I have to match way. your energy. Yeah. Exactly. We had to do this a whole different change strategies. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But then there's a line that Gina says at one point, uh, she goes, you can still understand that that will hurt my feelings. I'm like, I can't, I can't understand how that will hurt your feelings. I really don't get that. How you immediately, like you were in tears, Gina, you yeah. immediately were mad at her immediately sad when you have been telling her not to take anything from Tamara. I, 
as I, as I said before, like you can have your feelings and be sad to think that your friend may have talked about you, but not in the, I just still think that the way in which both Gina and Emily reacted was way, way too much. Like you didn't give her an opportunity you, you to were explain the context, nothing. Yeah. You, you've decided, you decided what Tamara said was fact and you, and you, I, this is also what I hate when they're like, they were going to essentially try to make Heather admit something that she like is very adamant that she did not say. So it's like, that's, is that the only way out if she admits it, even though she's telling you she didn't say it, like that's the only way you can move forward. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Gina says to Heather, I was, okay, this is where I, I had to write it down because I was so confused, but I think we may have figured it out already. Oh, her okay. line, her line is, I was so focused on my relationship with you that all I could see was Heather doesn't care about my feelings. She's not pulling me aside. It was just upsetting. It took the wind out of me. Like I literally wrote what the fuck. Um, but now that we've discussed that, what you're like, what you said was if Heather would stand up for them more and then maybe, maybe tell them like, yeah, fucking Tamara just called you a loser. She wouldn't have felt so bad, but then it feels like she was just talking shit about them with Tamara. Mm -hmm. Is that it? I think I'm reaching. It's not, it's not a reach. It's I, I am. No, I'm like, I'm begging for it. I'm like, is this oh. it Gina? Cause I don't know. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. I feel like it is a, it is, it is a reach. And I feel like, again, she's kind of parroting whatever Tamara said to her at that costume shop a little bit. And it's mm -hmm. like, did you feel like this before? Or are you just coming up with yes. this in the moment? Um, so I don't get it. I really don't. I still don't get it. I'm happy we're back to being confused though. Cause it's much more fun for me just to like, not like Gina. Oh, I, I will never like her. <laughs> I, I, I won't. I, that was like a vow. She said that with her hand on the Bible. I will I, never. I like, will just never like Teddy. Like just like Teddy. She she is she is she's not as she's the Teddy of she, OC. She absolutely is the Teddy of OC. But I it's so funny. I still no one can come close to my disdain for Teddy. <laughs> you really hate Teddy, and I love I it. can't even like stomach saying her name. That sounded really mean. <laughs> But it's just because she's like the biggest hypocrite I've ever heard in my life. Mm -hmm. Like she can rationalize the hell out of anything if she's on that person's team. And I think it just pisses me off because she's an accountability coach. I think if she had never told me that, I wouldn't be so angry with her. Yeah, she really sets herself up by presenting herself as a, an accountability coach. It's like, oh, honey, it's going to be so easy to drag you. I know. So I think that if she had left that job title off uh I would probably be <laughs> a little easier on her mm -hmm. I mean she would still be boring um don't get me wrong and I would still not want her on my screen but like my anger wouldn't be as like high right Heather says Emily is going to the Tamra school of friendship and says everyone is afraid of Tamra because she gets nasty and there's never any accountability for any of it and it's so ironic that that is exactly what they say about Heather that is what Shannon and Tamara say about Heather. It's it's so true. They literally <laughs> no accountability. You, That's what they you all, say. all of them, like Jen, Gina, Emily, especially Jen and uh, Emily. You literally will say Tamara said that you are literally the devil and that you shit your pants. And they were like, you know, what? I'm just like, I, I know that that's just Tamara, you know. So it doesn't even bother yeah. me that she would say that. And but like, it bothers me that you would say that, Heather, because like. That's just mean. Like, yeah. it's what? absurd. It's like, absurd. This, like, the double standards is outrageous. And it's like, why do you think that Tamara is allowed to talk to you in, in that way? Have some more self worth, people. Like, I would not talk to Tamara. I would like give her the cold fucking children. Honestly, that would probably gain you more respect with Tamara. Mm hmm. She, she, oh, if you ignore Tamara, she's coming. She's she's on her way. She's like, I'm sorry. What did I do? She's got, that's her trigger. She has her triggers and they're not playing, they're not playing into her triggers properly. Yeah. Heather's confess. She, Heather reminds us what Tamara's already done. Number one was the Taylor IMDB drama where yeah. she totally was sitting there talking shit and then threw Taylor right under the bus. Was like, weren't you saying shit about her IMDB? I'm like, bitch, so were you. Like you were literally there. Exactly. And that- and then she pulls Heather into the bathroom and she's like, I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't do that. What I said, what I'm like, you always spin it like this. 
And that's what he- and that's what Tamara keeps saying that Heather does. She, and exactly. It's, you know why? Because she's literally telling them what she does, but putting it on Heather to like miss. What's what's the word like when you distract people, or whatever, mislead or whatever. But Tamara's doing a fucking good job, and they're just really eating that shit up. Mm-hmm. Taylor's over here worrying about fucking soup or or like what what uh, Heather did when she got home, but. Mind you, Tamara was undermining you from the very moment we started filming. And you don't even Literally. realize that. Literally. And then Heather's confessional also. Tamara has systematically taken every single relationship and ripped it apart. That is literally what Tamara will say at the end of the episode about Heather. God, it's so good. <laughs> oh, see my new favorite franchise right now? Because they <laughs> crushed it. Mm-hmm. All season long. They did. Gina tells Heather, you have to come to my party so that you can put Tamara in her place. <laughs> yes, oh, she G- does. Gina changed her fucking tune quickly. It yep. was fun. It was fun to watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was not fun to watch was Jen going over to Tamara's with Shannon and doing a sitalonic. That was so gross. Why did we need that? Why did Jen agree to do that on because camera? She's a pick me, and she literally she, I, she has she has a desire to be liked so much that she's willing to do anything, and that's what I've no- noticed from her in her relationship and her relationship with Tamara specifically, who has just been beating her ass the whole beating fucking scene. her ass like insane, yeah. Shannon brings up the Mexico trip then. And Tamara is like, I'm done with her. And so, okay. But then they flash back to the van ride after that awful lunch where Heather left the table. And Heather <laughs> was doing weird stuff. <laughs> she I, shows them a picture on her phone and it's of, of a Halloween costume. And she goes, and look, her eyebrow is a snake. Then she starts <laughs> touching Jen's feet, saying how much she loves her feet. <laughs> um. Oh. I, I'm that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen, but I also enjoyed it. <laughs> it was like it was like, straight up weird. It was very weird. She acted like none of that happened. It was like exactly. and scene and scene. Yes. It's like, oh, how's everyone doing? How was their day? You can't have cute little feet. Like <laughs> And then she and then she doubles down at her confessional. Like they're just so cute. And then she's like, I don't have a foot fetish. But I'm like, I don't know. We <laughs> might. Did we just find Heather DeBro's little like her kink? Finally, yeah. Her little okay, kink. there we go. That makes her real normal. And <laughs> Jen tells the story of Heather saying she was going back to her room to grab the soup, but never comes back. And of course, this it's like they're going to be like, and see, see, and she goes to her room, doesn't come back. There we go. Another example. It's like, all right, Jen. Now you're feeding into. This side of the this side of the room, stupid. I a part of me is like, was there some type of conversation that Jen had with Tamara off camera that has like amped her? Because I felt like, mm. I, you know what I mean. Like, it was like a weird energy out of nowhere. Like, yeah. are you really that mad about the room thing? I kind of because I feel like Jen would would not come to this level of anger on her own. Like, I feel like she mentioned it to to Tamara and Tamara was like oh my gosh that that's so disrespectful if anybody ever did that to me and then like I again obviously we don't know that that happened but it just it just her shift of how angry she was at Heather about something that honestly didn't sound that like insane Mm -hmm. was was just weird so I feel like there's something I'm missing Mm -hmm. something I'm missing yep very weird Gina's party is pretty damn cool it was I, incredible uh where'd she get that money to do this that's exactly what i thought because it was that is exactly what i fucking because that was a proper party all of those entertainers all of them just that budget alone i was like that was a that was a proper ass party like you ate that up you, you yeah did that gina yeah like i don't think we've ever i've ever had more respect for gina i'm concerned about her finances because- no agreed because i'm um, like did they give you like a did they pay for this whole thing? Like, how did this work? Did they, maybe they split it with her. I know she they put, do that. She put it on a credit card. Oof, that makes me nervous. I know, I'm very, because it's like, I feel like Gina is constantly trying to keep up with these girls, especially like, you know, she probably in the back of her head keeps the hearing when Shannon's called her house little. <laughs> <laughs> did you see on Watch What Happens Live when Heather was on? 
Uh, they played a game where it was just shady shit. Like they wanted Heather to say awful things. Heather didn't answer this question, but the question was, who do you think will get the least amount of money if they sold their house? And Heather was like, I'm not answering that. And Andy was like, I would think Gina. I mean, she has a casita. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I will say, I, I will say thank you, Gina, for teaching me what the fuck a casita was. I had what the never, fuck is a casita? Never heard of it until I had Gina. Never, she said it so many times. I was like, I say it now. It's like, you know, you can have a little casita in the back. <laughs> I do too. It's like a full, it's a fully used word in my everyday life. I, I say it like I have said that word <laughs> my, whole my life. entire <laughs> life. I think I said it to Sean because like we like to look at houses that we cannot afford, but one day. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, we can have a little casita in the back. He's like, what the fuck is that? I was like, it's just a little house. You don't know a casita? A little house in the back. <laughs> a little house in the back. You know what a casita is? Oh, you're poor as showing Sean. Come on. <laughs> There's actually a Mexican restaurant right near me called Casita. So now I'm even more convinced it's a real word. I'm like, okay, it's a term, everybody. Maybe they like, got it. Maybe they did that because of Gina. Maybe they did. Never know. <laughs> Influence. Meanwhile, there's probably people like typing like, no, no, that's like a casita is like a real estate term. I'm like, oh, no idea. Oh, well, that makes sense. She is a realtor now, so. Yeah, I was I was surprised she passed that because the way she was studying with Travis, I was like, girl, you have to know something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Their Ugh. costumes were interesting. Gina's dressed as like the ringleader, lion tamer or whatever, and Travis is her lion. And then uh, what's her faces? Jen and Ryan come in the opposite outfits where she's the lion and he's the tamer with like no shirt on. Did I think it was kind of they... dumb. They were like making too big a deal out of that. I was just going to say that, Emily. I was like, am I the only one who was like, what's the big deal? I was like, like you guys just don't look. like him. Like, exactly. you just like, you, they just, there's a certain point where you're just like, have to admit, like, I just don't like him. So anything he does mm -hmm. irrit irritates me. And that's okay. That happens to me too. But it's just like, guys, you, you guys wanted us to think that that his costume was outrageous. And I'm like, it's but he Halloween. turned he turned around too and he was like, Aren't you guys used to it by now? And I was like, Yeah, like laugh at it. Like if he knows he's a joke and dresses stupid, then like I then they then thank God. Yeah. Like if I he thought he was fashionable, then you know. Don't get me wrong, I do think that there is something suspicious about him, but I will say this for the amount of uh things that Tamara has tried to like get this man on this entire season, he has like kind of gone through this unscathed and taken it on the chin and not like cause we've seen uh, like when other house husbands or whatever have been attacked like it gets really wild and I feel like he was appropriate in how he matched the energy he like, no no he it was almost like he prepared like he yeah. was like I'm gonna study up and see what not to do exactly you know yeah I I will give him credit because this this should have been like horrible for him like it kind of reminds me of how uh, Louis, like Louis doesn't do well. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I thought that's, well, that's how he would. I wouldn't compare those well, two. Well, no, I'm just talking, I'm just talking about like when people have, cons like they've all been concerned. I'm not saying he's on like Louis's level, but like Louis would like literally go off. I thought that's how mm. Ryan was going to start going, mm. going mm. off. And mm -hmm. he didn't take the bait. And I, I was pretty proud of he him. He just keeps laughing at it. He's showing up to events too, right with Tamara. Yeah. He's like, hey. We're over it. Are we over it? Are you done? I'm like, what the fuck? I know he's he must have had some training. I don't know. <laughs> like, like I've already I've already been shameless about how I'm like I don't think he's as problematic as everyone else does. I'm sure there's something going on, but like I really can't figure out why he would do all of this if he didn't love her. Yeah, I actually I, I just think when I say he's like suspicious, like I do. No, think, he is. Yeah, like I do think that like in the beginning of the relationship, he probably did some like weird shit and. But again, I kind of think that they've worked through it. So I'm not exactly concerned. I'm like, let's move on. Yeah. Okay. From it all. Taylor comes in clearly wasted already because she's in her like cotton candy. Outfit. She's like, wow. Like Taylor gets drunk real quick. Yeah. They even make sure to show a three panel split screen of Taylor drinking. Just so we get caught up. Like they're like, this is going to be. And as soon as you, anytime you see Taylor, Oh, uh, when I did my live for the Patreon, someone had asked if I had noticed that they'd cut a scene. So while they're at this party, um, I guess in the original airing, mm -hmm. the one on Bravo, there was this scene, which I'm going to, I'll play for, mm -hmm. of Taylor, like <laughs> getting mad at Heather. 
for the for the soup thing like it's a yeah. whole scene and Taylor yeah. like and then it's not in the peacock version oh it's not uh-huh uh -huh. it's not in the peacock version designers designers i'm gonna tell you guys a little something that i learned well not the hard way but i learned and i wish someone had told me sooner you can get body odor other places besides under your armpits and when I first had a new scent coming from my bathing suit area, I panicked and thought I had an STD. I had had a little rendezvous with someone new, never to be seen again. But in my Google searching, I was later targeted by an ad for Lumi, a whole body deodorant. Impulse purchase, I buy this. I had body odor in a new place and it was gone once I used the Lumi. So I tell every woman I know about Lumi because I know between friends and fellow ladies that sometimes we can feel embarrassed to talk about something like that because we've grown up with products that make it so your Virginia never smells like anything. That's the whole goal. It should smell like freaking fields of flowers. We've since learned that that's not necessary, not at all. But then this new odor appeared for me and I was like, okay, we have an emergency. I almost booked an appointment to see my OBGYN. Don't worry, I did eventually get tested. You know, be safe out there, please. But it's body odor. And Lumi is safe to use anywhere on your body. Pits, under boobs, thigh folds, belly buttons, butt cracks, vulvas, feet. Again, created by an OBGYN. She was tired of having patients come in and blame these odors on the Virginia. And she created something that is clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. I really hope you're showering in a 72 hour window, but you know what? If you're not, it's okay. Lumi's got you. It's aluminum free, it's baking soda free, and it's paraben free. It's pH balanced specifically for safe use below the belt. I use Lumi every single day. I don't like to smell. I get, I'm very smell sensitive. Lumi helps me there. The Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers because it comes with a solid stick deodorant, a cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like a mini body wash or deodorant wipes, and free Shipping. So as a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code SHESPEAKS at LumiPodcast.com. That equates to over 40% of your starter pack when you visit LumiPodcast.com and use code SHESPEAKS. That's LumiPodcast.com. Use code SHESPEAKS. And Lumi is spelled L-U-M-E. I love that. Matt and his girlfriend, Gina's ex, go to the party. I don't, I'm still kind of triggered that she just has her, that it's just, it's really uncomfortable that she's not addressing it properly. Like this could be triggering for some of you. I don't know. It's just like, what? Matt and I are cool. My girl. I, I've been, I, I also had, I'm trying to, you know, be super delicate because I, I don't want to offend anybody but I do find myself struggling to understand the dynamics because it to me what happened was super serious and I definitely understand her having to compartmentalize it in some ways for her children but I don't know how necessary like her children aren't at that party like do you do you need to have them there like I don't know I feel like there does yeah. need to be some type of it makes me like worry more about Gina. Like, are you sure you've dealt with this? And she's like, oh yeah, it was the cheating that was hard. I'm like, um. I don't think she has. I do think that she needs, she thinks she, she's I think she, really blocked it. I think she thinks she has. And I, yeah. this, I think this season uh, definitely made it super clear to me that she has, it's starting to bubble up in yep. some ways. Totally. Gina talks to Emily about how she's been more aggressive than usual because like I talked to Heather and like you're, but you can see Emily's like fucking pissed. She's like, she called us all losers. I'm like, no, okay. Doesn't even sound like something Heather would say, by the way. Like it doesn't sound like Heather would be like, well, but a bunch of losers. Like that's yeah. just not her vernacular. But and Gina, I, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, it's just like, and I also, to Heather's point, she keep, keeps trying to say this. She's like, at that time we were very close. Like, why would I say that about you? Exactly. And this is clearly just a fear you have that like this whole time the friendship was not real. Right. Which is sad for Heather because Heather is like saying that very thing. Like, I guess if this really wasn't 
the friendship I thought it was. That's very sad. And meanwhile, they're like, we knew it wasn't the friendship. So it's like Heather's Heather's childhood triggers make them triggered. So like she doesn't show a lot of emotion and she can Mm -hmm. be really sensitive, but like that's all stuff from her childhood because like we met her mom. Right. Their their triggers are someone who makes them feel like they're not as important in their lives and doesn't show a lot of emotion and shit. So it's like they're just not matching up in their triggers. Yeah. It's a one big miscommunication, guys. (laughs) Right. Big miscommunication. Yeah. Uh, But Gina tells Emily about the podcast, the podcast clip that was hard to say for some reason and emily's <laughs> like well the thing is tamra has been talking shit about me for five years and i've confronted her about it and she said i'm sorry heather i don't think she has apologized but <laughs> she didn't do it that's and then that's <laughs> so i feel like in that mo- moment again her, their points don't make sense because they're mashing it up with other shit i think in that moment Emily is just referring to all these random times that she was upset with Heather for saying the big boob comment or the snuffleupagus mm. comments. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Heather and Heather doesn't apologize for those things because she, you know, rationalized yeah. why she yeah. says it. So, but instead of just saying previous comments that she's made, like I've never gotten a I always apologize, but I never get a proper apology from Heather. She's just like, but she said it. She needs to apologize. It's like, no, she didn't say that. You she know, didn't it, say you know, that. She didn't apologize for the snuffle up against she, she did not. And That's, that was kind of annoying. She did not. She did not. Like, she just was like, oh, come on. It was this and that. It's like, but girl, you're so sensitive. Well, they get to, they start talking about that later. Yeah. Tamara and Taylor then join the conversation uh, with Gina and Emily. And I can tell Tamara is a little salty that Gina went to lunch with Heather. You can just feel it. And Tamara says that whenever something is thrown to Heather, she takes it, she twists it, and then she presents it. That is literally you. Tamara, that's exactly what you've done. We've watched you do it all season. She's such a little manipulator. Yeah. And then when Heather and Terry walk in, Tamara looks terrified, by the way. Tamara looks freaked out. Um, yeah. Heather wanted to be a dolphin trainer, but apparently there are no dolphins in the circus, so she's a, an aerial act. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it, I thought it was a fine costume. Everyone was being weird. I would thought it was fine. It's like she's. I don't understand what the problem was. I. They're just mad. They're mad. <laughs> it's like oh, to show off her body. I'm like, yeah, maybe. Like, yeah. so. I was like, so what did you, what did you want her to come in? Right. Like, yeah. What should what would what would have been acceptable? What's the proper costume? What's okay for her? Huh? Tell me. Taylor is so wasted at this point and she's and her and Shannon are having the like, I love you so much. I love you so much moment. Yeah. So and then Taylor eats the entire scoop of ice cream in one bite. I do not know how she did that. I was like, that was that not cold? My <laughs> teeth hurt just thinking about that. But she like, I don't even think she she just went. It went right to the back of her throat. <laughs> My God. OK, girl. She we she must be fun. I mean, you yeah. know. <laughs> That's why that husband puts up with her clear drinking problem. Yes. Um, He may have one himself. Allegedly. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. Uh, Tamara is just like mean mugging Heather with any, like Tamara looks so paranoid and so freaked out. She's watching every move Heather makes and like walking up to someone being like, do you see her over there? Do you see her? And she's like, just, she's actually not going and seeking people. She went to the bar and then I think it's Jen who pulls uh, Heather aside, but Heather, it, it is. she pulls her aside to be like, let's talk. Yeah. But then of course, Tamara's like, look at her, look at her over there. And so Jen says that she has felt like Heather had no interest in her. And I have expressed that to the other women. And if that is shitty on my part, then I'm sorry. Heather goes, I think that's shitty on your part, but I want to tell you something. You're a great member of this friend group. I'm so glad that Tamara brought you in, even though she's a piece of shit to you. I don't know how you even speak to her at this point. I don't understand why you put up with it because I'm not putting up with it anymore. God damn, Heather DeBro, you are so good. <laughs> it, it was like invalidating whatever Tamara said that yes. Heather feels about Jen in that w- just one fucking breath. I don't even think she breathed. It came out so flawless. I was like, oh, funny. God, that was oh. so good. And then Jen's oh. like, answer is so Jen. She's like, because I'm trying to figure it out and I don't know. <laughs> Jen. <laughs> Poor 
Jen doesn't know what she's supposed to be feeling. She's like, she am I supposed to be mad know. at Heather? Am I supposed to be mad at Tamara? <laughs> so but, true. But the way that they flip is so fun. Like, I just watching them fl- like be like, it is Tamara. Like, <laughs> Tamara's the one who made me feel that way. I didn't even have these feelings until Tamara said I had these feelings. And then I, and then I, then I said it. And then I, it, but I don't think I meant it. <laughs> like, <laughs> Is Tamra the problem? <laughs> it's so easy, too, for these women to get riled up because over here, Taylor is already mad at her from the earlier in the season when she was like, we'll do this movie together. And Heather was like, oh, you're so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I love that she said that, though. And she, meant, it was just, she, she meant it that way. Because it's like, <laughs> what fucking movie are you just going to offer me a role in? Like, I'm not just going to come on. Like, I thought that I know people thought Heather was being a shithead, but like, no, she wasn't. I was like, you don't just, I want to see what it is. I don't know if I want to do this movie. What is the movie about? Who's directing it? Like if she, if she has the ability to be like, let me look at the material first, she could. And it looked like she did. Wasn't she showing up with the script from Taylor? So it looked like she had read some of the script. The the thing is, I feel like Taylor honestly was a little unprofessional in how she presented it. And I think that Heather was correct in how she felt because first of all, I don't have to do anything. No. Like, it's at, and I thought that Heather, like, honestly was trying to be as nice as she could in an awkward situation because mm-hmm. the way Taylor was forcing mm-hmm. this fucking project on her was uncomfortable. Uh, she was totally. essentially, like, she was, it was weird. She's, like, airdropping her, like, this is your office. Like, bitch, I didn't say I wanted to do this fucking movie. I don't know, like, I, and I don't even know if I'm, I think I'm right for the part. Like, I, like come 100%. on, hundred percent. Like I, come on. And I'm and Taylor, you are feeling insecure because you came on strong. You probably told everybody on set that Heather's going to do this without Heather actually saying that, and you're embarrassed. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Heather and Emily, like they, Gina's getting on a unicycle, and so Heather and Emily are now like in kind of close proximity, just making light chit chat about Gina. And then Emily goes, "Look at me, I love you." I'm like, girl girl I don't know see then you do that like what's that so then the look Heather gives her though is so intense like she her face is just changes and she goes it doesn't feel that way oh my so Emily, god Emily pulls him off to the side and again they cut to Tamara watching every single word all freaked out Emily of course harps on the loser comment and Heather is like why are you even believing it and he- Emily goes you said you said it And Heather goes, I wasn't talking about you and Gina. You guys are my friends. I'm talking about Noella. I just love how many times she keeps saying I was calling Noella a loser, if anyone. And the thing is, I was like, guys, were we all not a part of last season? It's very clear that I like absolutely. She hated Noella. They had a huge beef. That makes so much sense. Hello. So much sense. Exactly. Heather then tells Emily that Tamara maligns her career, Emily's career all the time, says you're a party planner. She's not a lawyer. And then they flash back to Montana and Tamara saying, and she told me she was a party planner. So I'm practicing attorney. She clearly had a trial. She clearly hasn't had a trial in a couple of years. So she said it's on camera. Yeah. And this is why you see Tamara's fucking face because, Because, yeah, because she knows that Heather does know a lot of stuff that she, she has said, but she's just used to being able to like manipulate the truth. And that's, again, why she was laying on the ground with like, if I did say this, why didn't Heather, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm such a dumb thing to say. Tamara watches with uh, Taylor and Shannon, and she's like, look at her, look at her over there. And drunk as fuck, Taylor's like, she thinks she's better than us. It's like, <laughs> girl. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, you're not doing any yourself any favors in this particular moment. <laughs> I think everyone's a little better than you right now in this moment. <laughs> So okay, a mess. Emily tells Heather that uh, her intent is never to hurt her, but that's just like how she communicates with her sister. And so Emily cries and says, hearing that Heather might have even called her a loser was just such a trigger. And then she gets into it in her confessional. Um, but Heather says that she will do her best. And if she gets offended by something, she will tell her. But then this is a never before scene. And I actually thought it was kind of, it was a little bit for once vital because Mm -hmm. it gives more of this conversation. Emily goes, okay, but maybe try not to get so offended. And Heather goes, I do get offended easily. I'm sensitive. I know that. And I just am. And I'll try to do better. 
And then Emily gets to say, but here's the thing. That's the just, the just, ex- I can't say that word juxtaposition with you. I feel like you can be so strong and you can dish it out, but like, you can't take it when it comes back at you. And you're like, I'm sensitive. Mm-hmm. And Heather goes, no, no, no. You can come to me. If you're upset, I can hold my own. <laughs> I'm like, she's saying something different. Heather clarifies that it's the joking with me. Like she, and she goes, it's legit the way you joke. You have your triggers from childhood and I have mine. And I was mm. like, Ooh, Mike drop the mic on that one. That was good. Right. And in Heather's confessional, she talks about how in her family, their family didn't do emotions and they would like make fun of her for crying in a movie. So she learned to like not be emotional. And so Emily asks that when you think I'm being mean, can you remember that we are friends and that I care about you and that we have fun together? And then in comes Gina. And now Tamara is watching as Gina, Heather and Emily are like making up with Heather. Her and worst goes, fucking nightmare. She's like, I'm boiling right now. How do you like Heather or Tamara must know that she did something. Otherwise, why would she be upset at Heather and Gina and Emily making up? You do it all the time, Tamara. You say something and then you're just like, I'm sorry I did that. And then you move on. Maybe that's what Heather is doing. Nope. You know, she knows some shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know it. So Ugh. Tamara's confessional is she's trying to turn everybody against me. Honey, you just said, she just, okay. She said that about you. Like you're both, it's projection on every level from Tamara. Yeah, yeah. Tamara claims that Heather tries to act proper, but behind the scenes, she's the biggest villain of them all. Now I posted this, I believe on my Instagram. When Tamara was feuding with Shannon, she said that Shannon was like the biggest manipulator behind the scenes. Nobody knows. Vicky and I protected her all the time. Like she totally set up Kelly Dodd at that party, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So it's just interesting that whenever someone's on Tamara's bad side, this is the narrative she gives them. Oh, 100%. Even it's, in the- It's identical. Even Like when she first came in the beginning of the season when they were, when her and Shannon were not on good terms, like it was Shannon did all, did like- she, it's always on that person. Like Shannon was the person that ghosted me. She, like she didn't reach out. And then we find out when they sit down, Shannon did reach out. It's just like you weren't also picking up her calls and then yeah. she gave you space. And then she was like, okay, yeah, you did do that. It, it's like, it's so crazy. That's why I can't take her seriously. Yeah. Um, when she's like venting on the two T's and a fucking Todd. Yeah. Todd. <laughs> because, she yeah, only hates it so much. I hate it because the thing is, it's just a bunch of fired women <laughs> bitching and complaining and gaslight in gaslighting me, and I'm not doing it. Like she, <laughs> you, you got a podcast so you can complain about your ex coworkers, which is kind of fun, but like it's not based off a of truth. So I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm not. I, so that's what I take it as, just a bunch of lies. A bunch of lies. Tamara then walks over to Gina, Emily, and Heather, who are taking pictures. And she goes, oh my God, you're taking pictures with her? Oh, wow, that's so different than what you told me. And Heather just walks the fuck away. Like, Ooh, did you that seriously felt- just do that, Tamara? That was so good, too, because she was, it was just, like, not worth my fucking time. I thought that was such a great move by Heather. And mm-hmm. also, if I was fucking Gina and Emily, I would be looking at Tamara sideways like, you do this all the time, Tamara. You fight and make up with people all the time like excuse and it's me? like what i can do whatever i want so how come you're coming over pissed off because you're not controlling them anymore yeah it's very clear that your goal is to destroy heather and all of her friendships just like heather said and she mm-hmm. she's she's too smart and she knows your plan and she and she's not gonna allow it to happen nope and, and so Emily tells her we had a long talk and then says like what she said, you said that you were t- saying I'm not really an attorney. And as soon as the, the way Tamara turns around to be like, excuse me, it's like this reminded me of so many other times, like when Tamara was a cute, when, 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 what's his face, what's his name? Brooks was like, mm-hmm. consider the source. And she went looking for Brooks at the party. It's mm-hmm. like the same type of thing. She's like, she just marches over like a little possessed Chucky doll. And she goes, <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? The way Heather recognizes Tamara's energy and does it, she goes, I don't even want to deal with you. Very perfectly condescending. Yeah. And Tamara thinks she does something here. She goes, oh, why don't you? Because the truth is the truth. Heather doesn't even flinch. 
She goes, no, Tamara, you have your own version of the truth and I'm not interested in it, honestly. Damn, that was good. Oh, damn, chills. that was I have good. Chills. Oh. <laughs> like, because what? Because Tamara is like she's she's such a bluffer. She thinks that yes. stomping off immediately when yes. Emily tells her what uh, Heather said is yep. going to make it seem like well, if I was lying, would I go confront her? Yeah, you would because you have no problem. You've done it all season, straight up lying to someone's face that knows the truth. It's insane. You have, like she is. She has the biggest balls. Like, she will straight up tell you the sky is pink while you're looking at a blue sky. And mm-hmm. and she thinks that that makes it sound more believable, has more validity. And she she underestimated, underestimated Heather. It was really powerful, too, because they go back and forth. And Heather says, I'm not interested in this. You've been doing this for months. It was mm. like, ooh, she uncovered your plan. She got you. She did. It feels so good. Feels so good. Meanwhile, Taylor, Shannon, and Jen go to the bathroom, and Taylor is smashed, like beyond. I feel like she fell in the toilet. I don't even know what was happening in there, but I feel like she peed good. on herself because she peed on herself th- easily. A hundred percent. Terry walks up to Gina and Emily, and he's like, "Can you go help my wife?" And then they cut to Heather going, by the way, nothing you say means anything. And then back to Gina going, I think your wife is very capable of handling herself. That was good editing. Yeah. Heather goes, let's play your podcast where you said we're all losers. (laughs) And Tamara, once again, it goes, I was mocking you. And Heather does that finger circle thing that she does. Like you are late. This line though, this like the vocabulary, you are laboring under the misconception that I give a shit about how you feel. And Tamara tries to be all big and bad. She's like, I don't give a shit about you. And Heather goes, good, then let's move on. And Tamara goes, yeah, goodbye, bitch. You're just, it's trashy. Yeah. It's classy versus trashy. Yeah. No other way to call it. Okay. She's losing it. She's it losing was weird. it. Yeah. What's interesting to me, and a lot of housewives do this, uh, like Beverly Hills, they like this whole time before we uh the show aired, Tamara made it seem like she destroyed Heather during that season. Yeah, this, totally. This season. Mm-hmm. And it reminds me of like Puppy Gate with Beverly Hills, <laughs> like any gate with Beverly Hills. And then I watch the sh- the actual show and I'm like, what the fuck did you did you think I was going to like you saying it a million times and then me watching it was going to make me like not see what they I'm do seeing? think that's the thing they do. They fucking think they can convince us. I mean, to be it's almost like it makes me wonder, do they just want to live in this fake reality that they're the information they're giving us for as long as possible? Because they know when we see the season, we're not going to agree. Yeah, because it's like, I guess or they they get they get like six months of like everyone being on their side and yeah. we all fucking turn on them because I was like, you lied. Mm-hmm. You liar, liar, pants on yeah. fire. You fucking lied to me. Totally. <laughs> uh, oh, at one point, they take a group photo, but then after that, Tamara is like talking to Ryan and Ryan's just like, are we good? She's like, we're good. She's happy, so we're good. Like, see, you are just such a flip-flopper. You're like, you're all over the place. She's only good right now because she has her sights set on Heather. So she doesn't even have time to care about like this, like B B plot that she has been creating all season. With <laughs> totally. Jen and Ryan. Like she's like ugh, fucking over that, that storyline. Like uh, it's all about the Heather show tonight. <laughs> like the end of the season credits are usually a little lackluster, but it's fun. Not fun. That was so fucked up. <laughs> Shannon's is shortly after filming. <laughs> John broke up with her, but then it's like, or did he, they could have been back together, but like, they, you know, they had time to put that DUI in there. They I had thought time that, to write I, that DUI. I absolutely was prepared for them to have that in there because the episode aired after that happened. You can easily have written that in, but mm-hmm. I, I'm a little Gina, annoyed that they already taped the reunion. So we don't, we're not going to, we're going uh, to have a whole they, year. I, they have time to do a one-on-one with Shannon though and plug That's that true. into the reunion. Andy, you listening? Because <laughs> like they've done that with so many other people. Like when Robin... Remember when Robin yes. like, released her Patreon episode that had all this shit in it? And he was like, oh, yeah, right. You're going to do one-on-one. It was just on Watch What Happens Live, but still. Okay. Um, okay. The other things that were there, Heather's final confessional is about Tamara. And if you want to be the top dog, it's yours, please. I don't need it. 
Mm. Power, 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 power. Um, and then Tamara's is that her end of credit is just that she's gotten closer to Jen, Emily, and Shannon. I'm like very specific, interesting people you, okay. And right. that that is interesting, especially the Emily thing. Especially the Emily. It, yes, because we see the clip of the uh, preview of the reunion. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a good season, finally. It- it was really good, actually. I I have no notes for them. I actually would be happy to see all of them come back. Oh, no, all of them. Like, I, when people want Tamara gone, I'm like, here's the issue. She may have been messy and horrible in her execution and super obvious and all that. She did create all sorts of good content that Absolutely. ended up being episodes on episodes. So it's like, I can't really, because sometimes people do it and it's like, what did you just try to start? It doesn't go anywhere. It's kind of pathetic. But this yeah. was like, this this worked. It, it was a really fine balance of everything because as I said, like last season, I was so annoyed with, with Heather and then this season she was my favorite. And, but I think it is that like delicate balance of having a Tamra and then Tamra having a Heather and all, and I think everybody played their roles accordingly to, as supporting. So I'm, as supporting. <laughs> so I'm, I was very happy with casting no notes, 10 out of 10, bring everyone back. 100%. All right, guys, that ends. I was going to say Rosie because because <laughs> it's not like you can say Roni, but there's no there's no there's no easy way to say Real Housewife. Rosie. That's not it. That's the rock rock. Is that what it be? Real I don't know. Orange. It's not real. Ho- OK, that ends. That ends Orange County. It is okay. rock. Right. Rock. But that doesn't sound right. It doesn't rock no. on. Nope. Oh, <laughs> don't. That was worse. No, nope. we're going to stop. It was all my fault. I should have never done that. Uh, If you want to hear us talk, and I got a lot of thoughts on Southern Charm, head over to the Patreon and sign up for any tier. I'm making it available for all tiers. And love you guys. Mean it. And now, Patreon, let's fucking do this. Thank you so much for watching and for listening to She Speaks Bravo with Emily Hanks. If you haven't already, would you mind leaving a five-star rating and review on whatever platform you listen? That would be amazing. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you are subscribed and hit that bell so you don't miss an episode. And if you're looking for more content, more exclusive bonus content, check out the Patreon. I post two exclusive episodes a month and I'm covering just the Bravo jams like classic Roni, Atlanta, and of course Vanderpump Rules. If you just want to support the show, head to buymeacoffee.com slash She Speaks Bravo and buy me a coffee or two or five. We also have merch available at shespeaksbravo.com. And if you're interested in hearing my takes on non-Bravo shows, check out my new podcast, She Speaks It All. I cover the challenge, drag race, and any other show I'm obsessed with that's not Bravo. She Speaks It All is available everywhere you get your podcasts, just like this show. Make sure you're following me on the social medias. I am She Speaks Bravo across all platforms. Thank you so much for any support you give the show, even if it's just listening. Appreciate you. Love you. Mean it. I'll see you soon.